Now coming to our next question. Uh, now that question is from trigonometry chapter. Now what is the question given to you? If a triangle has sides 5, 13 and 12 units. Now whenever I am being given that the sides of my triangle is 5, 12 and 13 that, that means it is a right angle triangle. Because 5, 12 and 13 are nothing but your PT. PT or you can say they are my Pythagorean triplets. Now I hope all of you understand what is the meaning of Pythagorean triplets. Uh, that means the sides which can be only possible for a right angle triangle that are known as Pythagorean triplets. And out of the three given sides you can very easily understand that the highest side or longest side is your 13 centimeter that will act as your hypotenuse. And the other two sides you can say they are your respectively perpendicular and base band. Now after drawing this figure what is asking the question? He is asking you to calculate the value of sin theta plus cos theta. Now that is a very easy question because what you are going to do next? You are going to take one of the angles as theta which is apart from your right angle triangle. Now all of us know say this is P, this is B and this is H. This is perpendicular which is given to you as 5 centimeter. This is base which is given to you as 12 centimeter and this is hypotenuse that is given to you as 13 centimeter. So if you want to calculate sin theta plus cos theta, so all of us know that sin theta is nothing but P by H and cos theta is nothing but B by H. So you have to simply put the values here. P by H means 5 upon 13. B by H means 12 upon 13. So the net value you are going to get after calculation is 17 upon 13, which is given in one of the options. Now again coming to our next question that is also from trigonometry. Now the question is saying that if your x value is lying from 0 to pi by 2 then what is the value of sin x plus cosec x. Now here what you have to see you have to check the options and options are given to you as greater than 2, less than 2, greater than equals to 2 and less than equals to 2. Now for doing this particular type of question first of all you have to understand the concept behind it. Now see one way is to put any value from this and then you have to check now see whatever values are available to you between 0 and pi by 2 are namely your uh, pi by 6, pi by 4 and pi by 3. Now if you will put one by one the values you will get a particular range in which the sin x plus cosec x value will lie but that will solve only this particular question. You have to know the concept of solving any question of this type. Now what is the speciality of this particular question? Now see the values which are given to you are nothing but the reciprocal of each other. So for solving the sum of any this type of question you have to just understand one concept and that concept is known as AMJM inequality concept. Now I think all of you must uh, heard of this word AM. AM is nothing but arithmetic mean and GM is nothing but geometric mean. So suppose you have got two reciprocal values then or you have say two values a and b then arithmetic mean of these two values are always given by the formula a plus b whole divided by 2 whereas geometric mean of the same two values is always given as under root of a b and you can prove that for any two values the arithmetic mean value is always greater than or equals to your geometric mean value. So if you apply this concept in all those questions which involves the sum of any two reciprocal values then you will get a particular answer always. Now what is that? Suppose I assign my a as sin x and b as cosec, cosec x. So if I put this concept in this particular question I can write simply sin x plus cosec x upon 2 is greater than or equals to under root of sin x into cosec x. And all of us know that whenever we are going to multiply any two reciprocal values, the product is also always going to give you 1. So this value will become 1 and under root of 1 is 1. So the answer you will get in the next step after cross multiplication is always a value which is greater than or equals to 2. Now that is present in our C option. Now let's take some questions from uh, a different section. Now see what we are doing exactly is we are taking few questions from geometry section. Then we have taken some questions from your uh, quadratic equation chapter. Now, now I am going to take a question from number system. So from number system this time you have got this question. If AB plus BC plus CA is equals to 0 then you have to find the value of this thing. 
and the question was a square upon a square minus bc plus b square upon b square minus ca plus c square upon c square minus ab you have to get the value of this particular expression and the options available to you for this question is a3 b0 c1 and d minus 1 now what is the approach to do this question now see first of all i will just try to find out or figure out the value of this as you can see this question is going on in a cyclic order way so if you can chalk out the value of this particular expression you can make out the values for the other two but the main question is how to get the value of this particular expression so what you have to do let's not touch the value of a square but from the first equation i can get my value of minus bc and how i will get it if i send this bc to that side in the next step only the value will become minus bc and it is equivalent to ab plus ca now let me make it more clear by writing this a b plus b c plus c a it is given to you as zero so if you are shifting your b c to that side it will become minus b c and the thing which is left behind here is nothing but a b plus c a now after doing this calculation what you have to do let's keep the numerator as a square only but from the denominator i think now you can take a common so as soon as you take that value of a common the things which are left behind are nothing but a b and c that is a plus b plus c now you can cancel this two and you are left with a upon a plus b plus c so similarly you can solve this particular part with the same format and obviously you are going to get b upon a plus b plus c and similarly for the third you will get c upon a plus b plus c now if you can see all the three have got the common denominator that is a plus b plus c so in the numerator also it will become a plus b plus c on addition and both of them will get cancelled and the final answer will become one which is there in our c option so next we will again take a question from the same uh, particular uh, topic that is number system now the question is what is the value of x minus y into y minus z into z minus x whole upon x minus y whole cube plus y minus z whole cube plus z minus x whole cube you have to find the value of this total expression and the options available are minus 1 upon 3 plus 1 upon 3, 3 and minus 3. Now, here what you have to do exactly, you don't have to open any formula, you don't have to remember any formula, just you have to understand the concept of a formula which tells you that if in expression a cube plus b cube plus c cube is being asked to calculate it, agar aapko iski value hai, so what you have to check exactly, you have to check the values of the sum of a plus b plus c. Now, if this value is giving you 0, then this total value of a cube plus b cube plus c cube is always equals to 3abc. Now before applying this particular concept in this question, let me give you that particular formula from which you have got this expression. And the formula for that is a cube plus b cube plus c cube minus 3abc. And the formula for this is a plus b plus c in a bracket whole multiplied with a square plus b square plus c square minus a b minus b c minus c now in the same formula you just visualize the things try to visualize the things that suppose in a question now in my question say this is my a this is my b and this is my c and i have to find the sum of the cubes of the three values so if i am saying that my this value is a this value is b and this value is c so when you will add them now suppose i am adding these three values say a plus b plus c that means x minus y plus y minus z plus z minus x. So I am going to get the 0. Now in my formula it clearly says ki if a plus b plus c is 0 then the expression value that is a cube plus b cube plus c cube will simply become 3 abc. So in this particular part what you have a, p and c I have already told you. So what is the net value of this expression become in the next step. See numerator will remain as it is but in the denominator you are going to get the so numerator is x minus y, y minus z, z minus x, but the denominator will become 3 times of x minus y, y minus z and z minus x. So all the terms will get cancelled and you are left with only 1 by 3 that is there in our B option. Now next question let us uh, take from a different chapter that is logarithm. So what is the question given to you? In the question he has given you two values. One value is for log 6 to the base of 10 
that is 0 0.7782 and the next value which is given to you is log 8 to the base of 10 which is 0 0.9031 now using these two values he is asking you to calculate the value of log 8000 to the base of 10 plus log 600 to the base of 10 and he has given you some options let's not write the options this time so for solving this question uh, you have to know the properties of logarithms and the property which you are going to use in this particular question let's discuss it one by one what are the properties you are going to use first of all i will break this 8000 as 8 into 1000. I think all of you can understand that I can write 8000 as 8 into 1000. Similarly, the next value that is 600 that I can write as 6 into 100 log 6 into 100 to the base of 10. Now we have got a property in your chapter logarithm that if log a plus log b is there with a common base say common base is 10 then you can simply write this total thing as log a b to the base of 10. Now, if you can visualize the same thing in this particular question or in this particular step, you have been given the right hand side. You have been given the right hand side. A value is 8, B value is 1000 and the base value is 10. So, if you use this property, then you can write the same step as log 8 to the base of 10 plus log 1000 to the base of 10. Now, this forms one bracket. Similarly, using the same property in the second term, you can write the same as log 6 to the base of 10 plus log 100 to the base of 10. Now, just have a separation of those values which are already given to you. So, I will just put those two values in one bracket that is log 8 to the base of 10 plus log 6 to the base of 10. Now, why I am separating these two values because I know the values of these two as it is given in the question and the two things which are not given to us that we can calculate using formula and those two values are log 1000 to the base of 10 plus log 100 to the base of 10. Now these two values you can simply see that these are the values which are already there. So in the next step I can simply add 0 0.7782 and 0 0.9031 that will give me the value of this particular bracket. But what about the other two? So for the other two you have to use this formula log a to the power of n can be always written as n log a. As say something is not given in the base then you can take that base as 10. So if I try to write 1000 in that particular format so in place of 1000 I think I can write it as log 10 to the power of 3 to the base of 10. Similarly second value can be written as 10 to the power of 2 to the base of 10. Now if I can understand this formula then the power value will come to the front. So what it will become 3 log 10 to the base of 10 and from here you will get 2 log 10 to the base of 10 and as we all know that log a to the base of a is 1 that makes the two values that is log 10 to the base of 10 and log 10 to the base of 10 as 1. So you are left with two more values that is 3 plus 2. So 3 plus 2 is going to give you 5 and on adding this what you are going to get 2 plus 1 3 1 carry over 1. 1.6813 so the total answer become 5 plus 1.6813 that is 6.6813 now that is the answer okay next question uh, we are going to take from a chapter ci and si now for doing this question you have to first know the trick that whenever we are calculating difference between ci and si for two years Say we in a question, he is asking you to calculate the difference between CI and SI for two years. Then the answer for that is always equals to PR by 100 whole square. Now if you know this formula, then you can very easily do the next question. That is the only question which has come from this chapter CI and SI. The question says, question says that difference between CI and SI on a sum of money deposited for two years. That means this time is already given that is two. And the rate of interest at which you are depositing it is 5. That means R value is 5. And difference which you are going to get between CI and SI is already given to you as 50. That means the unknown is your principal value. And that is to be calculated in the question. So if you want to calculate then there are very simple steps. What you are going to do? 
15 is equals to p into you can cancel these two values it will become 1 upon 20 so 1 upon 20 whole square will give you 1 upon 400 so in the next step the principal value will become equals to 6000 rupees that is given in one of the options